Brothers and sisters, we all have a wilderness moment, a time that you don't know how you got where you got, and uh, at a time when you're just looking at a cloud and it's the only thing which can lead you by the day, and by the night there's some strange star or fire just leading you. You don't know where you're going, but you're just trusting. And uh, I just want to ask you, have you been in this moment whereby you're just trusting God and you cannot really understand where you're heading, but uh, you trust the process because God has sent some type of Moses to your life to get you out of your situation. But then it seems so difficult. It seems so um, hard to you. And uh, you're asking, what about my life? What about this relationship that I'm holding on? Will it make it? I'm just seeing, I'm just being led by a certain type of cloud. I cannot really see the signs. I can't see the end. What about my job? How is it going to be? Is anything going to work out from this new venture? And uh, you keep on getting worried. But let me tell you, my friends, we all get to some type of wilderness when God is trying to get us out from where we've been oppressed. Sometimes you don't look at things in the logical way that God sees them because we try to put on our carnal mind, our fleshly thought, our five senses to try and understand things the way they are not, uh, they are not supposed to be understood. Think about the children of Israel. They are just been oppressed for 400 years and here comes God sending Moses and Moses tells them, guys, you have to go. Of course, there's that moment you make the decision, yes, we have to leave Egypt. It's true. It's, it's my time to leave Egypt. But when you start in the journey, it's all joyful. It's all vibrant. You're all celebrating, but you will get to the wilderness. And even just before you get to the wilderness, you'll start sensing that, hey, man, I'm about to get to some type of wilderness. It's about to get bad down there. The moment you will see that Red Sea that you have to cross, you don't have a boat. You don't have anything which can help you cross. You don't have the instruments, not even a snorkeling um, gadget to, to just float away. It's all big. And when you look behind, you see here are the bills coming. Here are the situations coming. Here is Pharaoh, okay? And uh, I know what Pharaoh wants. He wants to pull me back to where I was. And you're looking behind and saying, Oh, Moses, the only hope that God sent. <laughs> Can you tell me how do I get out from here? And even Moses himself is trusting God. He's telling you, just put your trust in God. These are the people that God leads uh, our way to try and help us in our situation. You try to talk to your friend um, who is trying to lead you, guiding you, maybe. And he tells you, bro, you have to trust in God. He's going to open a way. But it doesn't seem natural. How, how are we going to cross this Red Sea? And that's at that moment is when you see the hand of God. My friend, when you hold on, God doesn't just promise us some types of boats. He doesn't promise us, um, you know, anything to cross the water. He basically is going to make a way in the ocean. At the last minute, when you don't even imagine, God is going to open a way for you. And uh, I tell you this because there are many people going through many situations and you do not really understand how am I going to cross this Red Sea? It's so red. It's so big. It's something that unless a miracle comes, I don't know how I'm going to cross it. But God always telling you that, hey, I got you from Egypt with a reason. And you see, once we cross the Red Sea of life and uh, we have started our business, we have started our venture, here's a new relationship, here are new goals, new ideas, new things. You see the new me kind of thing. Remember, you've just gotten into another wilderness that you have to move until things stabilize. Remember, that is the time that people start thinking about uh, the kind of foods they used to eat back in Egypt. You start thinking, oh God, you told me to open, to start my own new job, but I think I just would rather be employed. When I was employed, there were some benefits. 
when I was there back working for that guy, even though he abused us, even if he did this, but at least we were eating. At least there was something. That's, that's what the children of Israel, some of them were saying. It doesn't matter if these people used to beat us, but we had some goodies. We had some good food, maybe some maize and beans, and we could at least survive there. There was a place where we could be buried in case anything goes wrong. You see, that's how people look at life. While at that time, God is showing you, hey, I have a promised land, a place where I want to take you. I want you to focus ahead. Remember, the promised land is always in your mind. And uh, God is always telling us, do not be afraid. Do not worry. Don't worry where you'll get the water. God is going to bring water from a rock. Don't worry how you're going to eat. Manna is going to come from nowhere. You will eat until... <laughs> meat comes out from you know your nose and mouth and everywhere because it's going to be so much that you'll wonder is it me who could not pay rent that today i'm able to pay my own rent and my friends and my family and send money home and do all these things like how did i do even in my kind of wilderness i'm still able to survive and you see for complainers they never really make it to the promised land Complainers, if you complain a lot, God doesn't want complaining. He wants a spirit of gratitude for you to say thank you. Thank you for the water. Thank you for taking us. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you. Even though Moses stayed much more in, on, on the mountain, I didn't worship idols. I didn't change and start focusing on my five senses. Because when people focus on their five senses, on what they see. They, they lose the faith that they had with God. You start looking at things and saying, I don't think Moses is coming again. I don't think God is going to give me any report. It's been 40 days. How, how on earth is he going to come back? But my friends, if you focus ahead, you're going to see the promised land because the promised land is coming. And that will be the fullness of the manifestations of the sons of God. And, and God is going to do things that when you look back, when you're at Canaan, at the promised land, you're going to look back and think, <laughs> I could still be in that place employed. I could still be at that place <laughs> in Egypt. Look at my life where I am right now. Yes, it might have costed me 40 years, but finally I'm somewhere. Finally, I've learned so much. I've had an adventure all through the desert. My friends, this life that we're living in is some type of wilderness, some type of adventure, some type of thing. And um, God is leading us. Do not give up. Do not give up even when you don't see the real sign of where you're heading. Just put your eyes on the cloud, which is leading you. Put your head on the cloud and God is going to lead you. And he always puts some type of Moses on our path that he will be able to guide us through. Just ask God, hey God, where, where is my Moses? Where is this guy who is leading me? Just, I, I need some encouragement. So this message is for people who feel heartbroken by situations. Just know that God is getting you out of your wilderness. It's just a matter of faith. 